Welcome back to Riddell's War Chest. Uh, this glossary is currently up to the G's, G to H, and uh, the first word for the G's is gain of function. That's an ominous term, isn't it? The term that Dr. Anthony Fauci made famous for all the wrong reasons. These experiments take a pre-existing virus and weaponize it for use in germ warfare. And in this instance, the operations at the Wuhan laboratory in China financed almost entirely by American money at the behest of one Dr. Fauci. And we know that, despite the embargo that the NIH, the Homeland Security, the Pentagon and the State Department have put on the necessary confirmatory documents, they were all in on these diabolical operations on the SAR-CoV-2 virus. In 2014, this virus was taught by mice treated with human genes previously imprinted to transfer itself human to human by giving it the ACE2 extra receptor, enabling it to become readily transmissible, an ability it did not have prior to this gain of function diabolical experiment. Please note the success or not of this experiment could only be judged if the virus were to be accidentally released on an unsuspecting and unprepared population. There was no other way of testing it, and it first appeared in September 2019. It is worth noting too that the construction of this virus in a laboratory was considered highly probable by the scientists who were queried, until that is the House Select Subcommittee on the origins of coronavirus pandemic was convened. It was subsequently revealed by clinical virologist Robert Redfeld's expert testimony that the Scientific Advisory Committee, who actually denied the possibility under examination, had to a man previously admitted that in fact it was quite possible that this could happen. Yet, after the pre-media release meeting, they had all changed their opinions because Fauci, Collins and Tedros and co. wanted a single narrative on this subject. A really tight group with total confidentiality was asked of Collins by Fauci, and that is documented. And because there was no debate, we can be confident that it was not a scientific endeavour. Science never selects a single narrative. The decision is not usually unanimous in such matters. The select committee's findings that the proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2 was the result of scientific collusion at the highest level, February 17, 2020. Source, have a look at Dr. John Campbell's YouTube Gain of Function and Senator Rand Paul is interviewed by Matt Kibbe on Liberty YouTube. Number two in the G's would have to be gay conversion therapy. Now, despite any amount of evidence to the effect that there are numerous people who have switched to or back to heterosexual attraction and away from same-sex attraction, the, pro the protest remains that whatever is genetic is normal and irreversible and should not be treated as a mental, emotional or spiritual sickness. The um, assumption untested and refuted uh, by geneticists, by the way, including Richard Dawkins, who was quoted as saying, there is no gay gene or chromosome, is that any condition one is born with, quote, unquote, born with, is predetermined and therefore there should be no attempts to alter it. It is natural and cannot be tampered with. And any attempt to alter it will do great emotional harm. This is also the reason that converted gays, those who have recovered their heterosexuality, and ex-transgendered people pose such a threat to their own kind and are also made subject to jeering and abuse from their compassionate neighbours. 
But being gay is not a life sentence with the right kind of enlightened help available, as many people already know, regardless of whether they have been ghosted and silenced by the tolerant rainbow community. However, such radical reorientation slash reform, often unhelpfully labelled conversion, never does result from religio-coercive forms of intimidation, indoctrination or coercion, which are themselves injurious and can never be construed as therapy. That is why the hyper-inflammatory term gay conversion therapy is such an oxymoron. Look that one up in the dictionary and should never have been made the basis of such far-reaching legislation outlawing the right to free speech in a therapeutic clinic. Why? Well, let me list the reasons. A. Because most gays are anything but gay. Camp is not the same as happy. Trapped as they are in an orientation, not always of their own volitional construction, and utterly ignorant of how to escape it without enlightened help, often jeered by their peers and subject to humiliation and social despisal, they are to be totally supported in their search for what is missing in their lives, not ostracised, not left to entrench themselves in what has become an ill-advised psychosocial survival kit. And B because the term conversion has no factor of coercion, no factor of exploitation, and no factor of abuse necessarily expressed or implied within it. The massive confusion around this topic only exists for those who have never made the necessary distinction between conversion and coercion in their own thinking. Now, all profound change of heart and mind involves the sense of conversion. Otherwise, there is no deep change of heart resulting. If there is to be no conversion involved, why seek counsel or any on any issue or engage in dialogue or debate with any opposing view about anything in the first place? And reason C because any effective therapy or healing technique can never involve any element of coercion whatsoever, simply because of the old adage that a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. In conclusion, has any subject ever been the object of so much fear ignorance, prejudice, bigotry, misguided passion and wrong-headed legislation since the Salem witch trials is this one. And if your desire is to silence this appeal to reason and wisdom, gained, by the way, over thousands of hours of professional clinical practice, if your desire extends to the use of homophobic type whip words on me, then you are very much a part of the pottage of those who rule out what they are utterly ignorant of before giving it a proper hearing. And quite possibly another slave to the reprobate mind that tolerates no other view but its own that is so typical of woke thinking. Is it time to fess up to that yet and seek the help of debriefing you never got in your formative years? Why don't we find out? Number three in the G's covers the Great Barrington Declaration. Have you heard of that one? It's a fascinating concept. The Great Barrington Declaration the statement, signed now by nearly a million doctors and scientists, initiated by Dr. Jayanta Batari to limit the reach of the prevailing political narrative at the time of the lockdown ideology, treating everyone as biohazards as promoted by Fauci, Allen and co. The declaration stated that, contrary to current propaganda, the lockdowns would do more harm than good 
and that there was in fact no scientific consensus on this stance, re-lockdown and mask mandates at a time that many were afraid of speaking against the prevailing narrative. Why? For fear of losing the National Institute of Health funding, the NIH, administered by Fauci, their jobs and their reputations. The backlash from Fauci and co. against the initial signatories was fierce. Quote, every reputable doctor and scientist excluding those on the fringes, supports our protective measures, Fauci claimed. My source, the COVID-19 mandate, silencing the opposition, a YouTube interview, March the 23rd. Number four on the G's is group identity. Now, fascism and identity politics by another name, that which eclipses individual identity and then usually regresses to a gang of us and them tribalism or nationalism that will nearly always become violent in the course of its life. Beware of group identity. It's coming at us like a tsunami to fractionate harmony everywhere. Now we move on to the H's, and H number one stands for hate speech. Is it that which threatens people's safety and welfare, this hate speech? Is it that which may invoke crowd, fear, anger or violence? Or is it just you hating what I'm saying? Taking offence and engaging in intimidatory behaviour as a means of silencing my objections and my perspective just because I'm contradicting the current political narrative fad. Laws that condemn hate speech and conflicting perspectives are the first link in the chain of totalitarianism and one we should be very, very careful of. Those who can control the speech of the people have also been granted the authority to try to control minds and thought police with the power to predict criminal offences and detain or harass suspects are the very next step. Hate speech laws are inherently dangerous to foundational human freedoms and the thin edge of the wedge of human tyranny, which is now coming for us and to us, ready or not. H number two, heteronormative. Heteronormative or not. The great religio-moral controversy and division of this decade for the Western world. Its opposite, homonormative, is claimed by President Putin as the Western perversion that justifies Russian opposition to the Western world as symptomatic of its moral decay. Is it something society should fear as they have from the beginning? Or something society should now aspire to? The battle continues. May it ever remain a moral one and never degenerate into becoming a violent one as it has already in Islamic states, the Russian states, and anywhere that homosexuality is deemed to be a capital offence, including Uganda of recent and some other northern African states. That is not the solution. We battle not flesh and blood. We battle principalities and powers, wrong concepts and ideas, as St. Paul reminded us from the New Testament. Number three in the H's would have to be the hierarchy of victimhood. Yeah, there's such a thing as a hierarchy of victimhood. It involves a kind of victim veneration scale whereby black people and LGBTQI plus share the top level above reproach, and then all women in the middle, and privileged white middle-class cisgender males at the very bottom. Unless, of course, they are also fundamentalist Christians, in which case they can be completely written off as beneath respect and beyond contempt. 
the hierarchy of victimhood. Number four, the hierarchy of health professionals. Oh yes, there's such a thing, all right. Another hierarchy that goes by the alias of physicians' picking order. I wonder if you've had any experience of that. Essential to the understanding of epistemology and health-related disciplines, I think. It's a well-known fact that obedience is expected in medicine. Did you know that? In this matter, says Dr. Anthony Fauci, I am the science. An American immunologist's infamous quote underlines the need to understand this dangerous and arrogant phenomenon and why the SARS-CoV-2 virus and its mRNA solution may well turn out to be the greatest man-made disaster ever visited upon Western humanity, with over 20 million dead and many more killed or injured by the so-called safe and effective vaccination. The current medical journal peer review process is deeply flawed, because of this pressure to conform. Speak with one voice, they call it. The infamous single narrative, they call it. And a lack of critical thinking amongst top medical officials, with a commensurate loss of trust in formerly beyond reproach medical journals, including the once prestigious Lancet and even Nature magazine. Goodbye credibility when you look at what they leave out of their peer-reviewed articles. Number five in the H's would be human consciousness movement. Waking up to endemic oppression and privilege, including concepts of mindfulness, the conscientized, the woke, the alumni, spiritual awakening, etc., always in pursuit of what we value by way of justice, injustice, compassion and acceptance, and away from obstacles and anything deemed to be bad for the human condition, useless or destructive. It's a cause that is once hope-filled and potentially very dangerous for the liberty of man. For he who has a strong enough why, your purpose, can bear any what, the strategy, or how the methodology in their single-minded pursuit of it, a quote from none other than Nietzsche himself. Beware the hope and the danger of the new awakening. Six, the hyperbolic tapering. It's a medical term. You'll never have heard of it before. But because of a false assumption that depression is caused by chemical imbalance or low serotonin, two beliefs that have never been clinically proven to be true, by the way, when any of the 43 million Americans currently on antidepressants, that's one in four citizens actually, attempt to come off their medication, they all too often fail in this notable effort. Of course, they usually experience low mood, anxiety, mood instability, and multiple other uncomfortable symptoms as evidence of the physical withdrawal experienced. However, these are often then misdiagnosed as illness relapses, explained as a return to the historic underlying pathology by medical professionals trained in drug-dependent allopathic medicine. Hence, the patient becomes convinced of their need to stay on their prescription psychiatric drugs. Literally, a life sentence descends, when in fact what is needed is a strategic withdrawal of the medication in smaller and lower increments, while the body, brain and mind all learn to live without them. This is an ordered strategy of hyperbolic tapering to come off an addiction that is neither brief nor mild for many people. And all in the process of desensitization and allowing one's entire metabolism to get used to the missing neurological crutch, something that does not happen with the standardized but brutal linear tapering. 
Do not confuse the two if addiction and mental illness is within your brief. Refer you to the myth of low serotonin and antidepressants the enlightened Dr. Mark Horowitz presents to us. We are grateful, Dr. Horowitz. And that concludes uh, the H's, and uh, we'll go on, but stick around for some more of The War Chest, Dave Riddell's Glossary of Power. It'll make you armed and dangerous, in a good way, of course. If you like what I've said so far, let me remind you that you can download the entire transcript for free. Uh, click here and uh, you'll be able to read it for yourself.